Uh, hello again and welcome to this occasional video series which I call Interesting People, Interesting Times. And I'm delighted to be joined by Dubai-based Dubai specialist Eamon Itani, who's a business growth specialist. He's a public speaker. He's uh, a counsel for many startups. Uh, Eamon, thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Eamon, first of all, just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got into uh, helping particularly digital companies to get going. Um, my area of specialty, um, Eric, is working with the business owners uh, to help them grow their business by acquiring more customers, by building their teams, uh, and, if they're, and if they're growing, I help them introduce a business process in, into their companies and help them with the customer retention, uh, especially in, in current times that are uh, highly technology driven, highly digital marketing acquisition driven, uh, and uh, customers are difficult to acquire and difficult to keep. So. And obviously in this pandemic time, um, there must have been a massive amount of interest. Suddenly people had to really gear up on the e-commerce side, presumably because of all the physical restrictions that were being imposed. Um, well, Eric, you get to see there's a wide spectrum of business owners uh, during COVID. Let's look at those who were strictly offline, or right? strictly have always been offline. They've done some social media activity as in they have like a page or they have some activity on social, but it's not a business driver. So if you look at revenue acquired, so revenue tracked from digital, it's usually less than 10%. Did it, that social media engagement that they had, you know, however small it was, did it actually help them in that process of moving over as you're describing? You can't have something that's been on the side of your business for a few years. And then now it has to be at the core of your business on so getting your customer, servicing your customer, solving their problems and, and so, so on. And in terms of the native digital businesses, those that that was at the core of their offer, presumably they had a head start, did they, Eamon? Those were not, those were not as effective. So some of them had a, 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 a significant bump. Others had, a, you know, a, a bit of a, a slowness, but it's nothing nothing significant it's as if they had like a summer season dip if it's like a seasonal business they had a bit of a, a, bit of a dip during a, a, a slow month that sort of thing and when i deal with the founders of that 100 percent online businesses they're calmer they know that it's business as usual for them more or less those who are not those founders who have been 100 percent let's say 97 percent online uh, let's say sorry 97 percent offline and they're trying to bridge it online those were panic calls what do we do how who do we get how do you, so they, they have to squeeze in in three months what they thought they had seven, eight, nine years to gradually get to. And how did communication come to be central in that? Uh, communication, Eric, is a critical aspect, not only from a customer perspective, but even on the inside of the company. So even the staff, who we continue to help and service, they don't know if they have a job. They don't know what the company will turn it into. There are changes in the company, but they, there's not even enough internal communication for them to know what's going on. Uh, there's communication with the customer saying, look, we were able to service you before. Now these are our new channels on how we're going to service you. Third, if customers come back with problems, how are we servicing them from a support perspective? Were there big differences in confidence in some of the people you are working with in terms of how they manage that communication? Simple examples of popular supermarkets and so on. Their delivery of groceries is three weeks later. Although, you know, I can see them physically from my house. Uh, I can't go there. I know they're huge. They have 20 other branches. Yet that small digital only uh, startup uh, that has been in business less than two years have been able to deliver within 60 minutes. So that, you know, was unsettling for me. Is like, you have, that business has so much. You have the physical, you have the experience, you have the network, you have the relationships with all of these vendors, you have all of this, but you're unable to make that rich divide. And yet this young and up, young up and coming business has been able, able to do that in a, in a much more effective way. And how each of communicated, you get to see the difference. Yeah. Do you think those changes are now permanent? Do you think that the, the, the big operators can catch up? A good six weeks into COVID, I would have Eric discussions with business owners. And they say, so you think we should go online? I was like, it's been six weeks. 
your business has been shut down for six weeks. How can you just, how can you be asking this question? You know, what, what are you waiting for? So that mindset of, let me wait. Just another month, another two. Let me wait the summer season. Let me wait until Q4 of this year. Then we'll see what happens. So that let me wait will be to the detriment of, uh, of that establishment organization. Amen. Listen, it's uh, wonderful to talk to you as always. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, as I say right now, stay safe and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Good to talk to you.